Hi, good morning, everyone. Okay, let's wait for uh, three more minutes and then we'll start off as others are also joining in.
Great. So let's get started. Um, so just want to hear it from you, first of all. Uh, why do you want to learn uh, <clears throat> SQL and Power BI? Maybe you want to include your name, uh, if you're currently working, uh, what's your role, and what is that you know already uh, in Excel, SQL, Power BI? And then why do you want to join this? Okay. Yeah, please go ahead. Yeah, online participants, uh, please go ahead. Your name, where are you working? Uh, what is that you know and what is that you want to learn? Okay, I, I see it, Abhiksha. Fine, then um, transition into the data analysis profile. All right, thanks for that. Others? Uh, you may want to unmute and uh, share your introduction with us. Or you can use the chat window as well. Yeah, I see it, Anthony. Uh, you're working as a data researcher, business transcription. Okay, cool then. Okay, others also please uh, online. Uh, your name, where are you working currently and what is that you know in uh, you know these tools and what is that you want to learn? You may want to unmute, you can share your introduction or you can use the chat window as well. Okay, so someone else is also there, James, I see it. Um, so basically you want to, okay, looking for a leap in career. Okay, perfect. So it's, uh, we are running both online and offline here. <clears throat> okay, so um, let's quickly introduce ourselves. Uh, uh, we are from Excelitics. Uh, it's been, with nine plus years, uh, we've been delivering these data analytics and uh, uh, reporting tools, uh, training programs, right from, you know, basics of Excel to, you name anything like uh, Power BI, Tableau, ClickView, Python, okay? So anything related to data analytics we are offering. Um, we got a good network, a professional network with 30,000 plus uh, connections in LinkedIn. And uh, 
we are Microsoft Authorized Test Center to conduct the Microsoft exams as well. Uh, you can take the exams here itself. And uh, coming to the data, data is uh, universal. You, you take any anything, any business data is universal, right? Uh, so, so we focus more on the data and data analytics related uh, training programs. Uh, you see here the list of courses that we offer, you know, right from advanced Excel and uh, so many other things, along with a few of the ERP tools as well, because this is where the data is usually generated. And also the certifications you can go uh, go with us, right? Um, Microsoft Excel certification and our board certification. They, they are called Microsoft Office Specialist Certifications. We also have a couple of customized courses. One is the weapon uh, course, the other one is analytics power pack. Uh, you also get the certification for them. And we also offer Microsoft Power BI PL300 certification as well, which is a Power BI Data Analyst Associate certification. Other certifications also are there and uh, we do the consulting solutions as well. Uh, we build the dashboards, automations, and so many other things. So this is briefly about us. And uh, coming to this course, uh, the course that you chose is uh, SQL and Power BI combination. Um, the batch number is B004974497. So in this one, uh, we'll be covering both, uh, you know, Power BI and SQL. Okay. So before uh, we proceed to the next step, I would like to ask you a question here. Um, how many of you are good with advanced Excel? Let's say when I say advanced Excel, you should be aware of the pivot tables, lookup formulas, okay, conditional formatting, creating the dashboards, right? If you have already completed our advanced Excel course, then you are ready for this course. But if someone is very, very new and beginner to Excel, this is not the right course for you because you would be struggling to understand the concept because all the data fundamentals are covered in Excel itself, right? From But in these sessions, SQL and Power BI sessions, we directly talk about tables, we directly talk about visualizations, we directly talk about you know how to write a query to extract the data from multiple tables and all. There I'll be giving you examples from Excel, <clears throat> how it works in Excel and how it works in SQL and how it works in Power BI. So if someone is aware of Excel concepts, then they can easily relate to uh, SQL concepts and Power BI concepts. But someone is very, very new to Excel, then probably I would be talking about directly a VLOOKUP example. If you are not sure about the VLOOKUP, then uh, you cannot understand what is a join in SQL and you can't understand what is a relationship in Power BI. So that is the dependency uh, there. So I would like to hear it from each one of you that are you good with Excel or not? You may want to use the chat window. If you are good, say yes. Otherwise, you may want to stay in this, uh, you know, uh, orientation session. But uh, when it comes to the learnings, then if without Excel, learning SQL and Power BI is a bit challenging one. Okay, online participants, can I assume all of you are good with Excel? Please confirm. Perfect. Yeah, perfect. I see, I see the responses. Excellent. Perfect. Thank you. Okay. Uh, excuse me. Uh, good in the sense, like, see, I do uh, we look up keywords and, as you said, like conditional formatting and all. But I'm using extensively from Feb of like 2023. So, do you think still it is uh, uh, like uh, I'm a uh, fresher, like, uh, or do I need to have more exposure? Or depends. I can manage, but I can't say I am too good in Excel. <laughs> I can manage. Okay. So, it is the look of formulas, pie words, yeah, charts, yeah, yeah. That's dashboards, that's formatting. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I do. Because sometimes, you know, if we do not set this expectation correct at the beginning of the session, uh -huh. people in the session, they realize after a couple of sessions, they realize that, okay, I'm talking something about Excel and then there I'll relate that concept with SQL and Power BI and they would be finding it really challenging because first of all, they don't know what is VLOOKUP. Let's say if I directly write a VLOOKUP, they ask me a question like, you know, what, what is that formula? 
So that no, no, that and all I do. But yeah. The, yeah. That that's the reason I'm just mentioning these things. Like uh, Excel is like again a prerequisite to proceed to SQL and uh, Power BI. Yeah. All right. So today I'll, I'll keep it simple. And uh, why we have created this kind of a combination like SQL Power BI combination. And we also have a package called Analytics Power Pack there. We cover Excel, SQL, Power BI, but you are directly coming to um, maybe a few of you are part of already Analytics Power Pack and now starting your Power BI and SQL sessions. Uh, but few of you would have joined directly, uh, right? Uh, because you know that your Excel skills are already good. So that's why directly you're choosing uh, SQL and Power BI. So let me take you through, first of all, my profile as well. Uh, just to introduce me, I'm Kishore and it's me and good 15 plus years. I've been into this, uh, uh, you know, analytics and reporting roles. I worked as an automation expert. I was worked as a data analyst. You know, I, I led a team of data analytics. Uh, uh, with you know different types of domains i work with uh, starting from us healthcare revenue cycle management rcm financial data analysis idss analytics contacts and analytics i work with so many tools like right from my uh, excel vba macros sql access sap bobi crystal reports clickview tableau power bi you know, recently started working uh, our, our learning power apps and power automate work with Altrex. Um, programming knowledge is there, you know, RPA tools, robotic process automation tools, macro express and win, win automation, so many tools. Um, I'm a Microsoft certified trainer, uh, continuously for two years. Uh, I'm a Microsoft certified professional, uh, Deloitte faculty excellence certified, Six Sigma certified, you know, so many badges I've earned um, from Microsoft, basically. Uh, for these things, you will have to write exams, right? Once you write, once you complete the certification, you will be issued a badge and you can Show it, you know, on your profile like this. And this is my skill graph. Uh, don't think I'm from a technology background. I'm become MBA, uh, but work with, uh, you know, worked in so many technology roles. Um, the last uh, job I was into uh, as a senior consultant in data analytics team in quarter Racking sites. They do a lot of AI and uh, ML things, artificial intelligence things. And prior to that, I was with Deloitte. I was with United Health Group as a process automation expert. So basically this is a technology role, but yeah, uh, you know, with the VBA and RPI tools, uh, I, I could crack this. Um, so prior to that, I was into financial data analysis. So my profile is very much diversified. I was with, uh, you know, both functional and, uh, you know, technical sites. I, I worked in both the places, uh, different roles and uh, responsibilities I've uh, handled so far. So that's briefly about me. Um, so coming to this training, as I mentioned already, the batch number is B00497. So this is a batch number you need to uh, mention whenever you want to uh, get any information about the batch or something. You can talk to the front office with this batch number. Uh, this batch is a weekday batch, Monday to Friday, 9.30 to 11 o'clock. Okay, Monday to Friday, 9.30 to 11 o'clock. Um, you know, both SQL and Power BI together, this would take about a one and a half month. Monday to Friday only. Uh, if there is any national holiday, it's going to be a holiday. And Saturday, Sunday, there won't be any sessions. This is designed only for uh, weekdays, okay? And right after this session, if you want to go for Microsoft PL300 Power BI certification, yes, you can go for that. We'll also provide you enough uh, material for that to crack the certification. And it's an online examination, okay? Examination for about 100 minutes and uh, it's a thousand marks exam. 700 is a cutoff, 70%, right? No need to worry about the cutoff because usually people get around 900 plus. The ones who attend the entire sessions, it's easy for them to crack the certification. Okay, so there is a certification fee, uh, a separate certification fee around 6,000 and along with the practice test, it is 7,500. So you will have to make the online payment for this. So that you can take a call once you are done with the, uh, when the, you know, with the course, then you can take a call about the certification, whether to go for it or not. But if you clear the certification, then as I showed you, like, you know, there will be a badge issued and you can mention uh, that you are a Microsoft Power BI certified, right? This will add up more value there. So that's briefly about this uh, training introduction. Weekday batch, 497, Monday to Friday, 9.30 to 11 o'clock, both SQL and Power BI will be covered. So I'll be doing one thing. <clears throat> I'll be covering uh, the 
SQL fundamentals first before moving on to Power BI. Because in Power BI data modeling, we need to talk about uh, keys, primary keys, foreign keys and all. So these keys are needed to build the data models and also a few of the aggregations uh, we need to know uh, before we proceed to Power BI. So I'll be covering SQL fundamentals first. Then we'll uh, learn Power BI to create visuals, okay? How to create the reports, how to create the dashboards. So many things are there. I'll take you through uh, both of them as part of this training for about 45 days, okay? Uh, before we start up the sessions, any questions if you have? Okay, fine then. <clears throat> just give me one minute, uh, then we'll start up. Meanwhile, just uh, take a look at this. And just give me one minute. <clears throat> Okay, so let's talk about uh, what is Power BI, what is SQL, and how these can be, you know, uh, working together. Or why do why one should learn SQL also? Why not Power BI? Most of the people they have this confusion. Like there are roles available in the market, says Power BI developer. So most of us, what we think is that okay, if we learn Power BI, then we can become that, you know, Power BI developer. With good packages like Freshers also getting around four, five lakh, six lakh also. Right. Then uh, most of the uh, people, they get confused and they say like, okay, let me learn only Power BI. But there is some challenge. So I want, I would like to just show it before we proceed to the subject. Let's say Power BI jobs in Hyderabad. I'll randomly open. Okay. <clears throat> Something posted. Data analyst Power BI. Okay. Complete description is not there. Let's take something that has senior software engineer. You see the role is the Power BI job, but uh, the designation is senior software engineer. And you see this, right? And uh, do we have a package details also? Mm. No. But if you look at this, um, the role is software senior software engineer for the Power BI job, but you also see that Power BI and SQL combination. Let me open anything. LNG mine train. Right, you see this? Yeah. So you, you can randomly open anything and you will definitely find the SQL combination. So there is a reason for it. SQL is not randomly added uh, in their profiles. SQL has got some very, very important role to do. And most of the participants, when they see like, okay, Power BI job, then they think like, okay, if I learn Power BI, this is enough. No, not actually, it's not enough, right? Why one should learn SQL? It's very simple. In businesses, right? They store the data. Every transaction that they do, they store the data. Where do they store the data? 
not in simple Excel files or CSV files. They maintain a database, right? They store the data in databases. It could be any database, okay? It could be a SQL Server database, Oracle database, MySQL database, Teradata, DB2, Sybase, MS Access, so many databases are available. And these companies, they store the data in the databases, right? Different types of databases. And the good common thing is among all these things, all these are RDBMS, relational databases. Okay, I'll talk about what is a relational database later. So all these things are very, very common, from, but from different companies. Microsoft has SQL Server database. Oracle has Oracle databases. Um, you have, you know, MySQL has MySQL databases, right? MySQL. So these different databases, they hold data, the business data, the transactional data, okay? So when you want to create a report, Okay, in a reporting layer, using Excel as a tool, in the reporting layer, you want to create a report. If you want to create a report, what is it you need? You need the data, right? But where is the data? That's say data is there in the a SQL database, nothing but a SQL Server database from Microsoft. If you want to create a report, then you need to know how to interact with the database and get the required amount of data. That's a database is there that holds last 20 years information. But you don't want to analyze last 20 years information. You just want to analyze only last six months information, right? Six months data you want to analyze and you want to create a report. Then dumping the entire database data into your reporting tool also not a great idea. Let's say Excel has, uh, you know, capacity limitations, right? Excel can only handle 10 lakh 48,576 rows, right? But your uh, 20 years data has, let's assume that uh, 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 10 million rows. 10 million rows cannot be stored inside Excel. Right, or otherwise you may want to go for Power BI. So Power BI can handle 10 million rows also, but uh, look at the performance of the report. It will be hampered due to a lot of data being loaded into Power BI. See, let's say if you want to analyze the last six months data, what happened, then you only need to know how to get only those six months, uh, you know, uh, data into your reporting layer, not the entire database. It doesn't make sense. When it comes to these kind of questions, restricting the data, grouping the data, aggregating the data, right? Writing additional conditions on the data, then definitely you need to learn a language called SQL, structured query language. So what does it do? It goes to the DB and whatever the query you write, I want to get the transactions data from so-and-so date to so-and-so date. When I write that query, this will execute and this will give me only that much data into my reporting tool. The reporting tool could be Excel, Power BI, SSRS, you know, so many things are there. So many different, uh, you know, applications are there to perform these reporting, right? So I would like to show you quickly how Excel can be, you know, interacting with uh, a database. I have one uh, SQL Server database in my computer. Uh, just go here, get the data from a SQL Server database. There is a server name. Pick a laptop and the database is EMP. I don't know how many of you have tried this kind of thing in Excel itself, but yes, Excel also allows us to write the direct SQL queries here. I can write select EMP ID name dbt id uh, job salary there are columns available in employee table i know this table okay i have some experience working with this table so i remember the column names i'll just directly click okay this will get me the data from the database like this and then i can load it to my excel so whatever the data is there in uh, uh, the database I am able to see here. Even if I delete something here, no need to worry. Why? Because this data is not manually keyed in here. If I do a refresh here, that value will come back again. So whatever is there in the database is now reflecting here. This is a great technique of directly linking a, a database table with your Excel and directly you can uh, create the reports. So these simple queries, one should have some idea in SQL, especially about DQL, data querying language, DQL. So that is what we will learn as part of our training, DQL, okay? This is more about uh, 
uh, extracting the data from the different tables and joining them, writing the aggregations, grouping them, and so many, so many things we'll do. Okay. Fine then. So your client application can be anything, nothing but you can use Excel, you can use Power BI, you can use SSMS, SQL Server Management Studio. Today, these things may be sounding little new, okay? These tools and you know, application names and all. But slowly, once we get into the subject, I'll take you through each and every tool and how it appears and what kind of queries you can write, okay, to get the required amount of data that you will learn soon, okay? But why we uh, why we need to learn SQL and Power BI together is because even though the role is Power BI developer, SQL concepts are definitely needed for this, okay? To understand more about the databases and how the schemas are designed, okay? All these technical terms like what is a schema, what is SQL Server Management Studio, what is an aggregation, these things may be sounding a little new today, but uh, slowly, you know, as we go on okay then you will be learning all these simple you know the terminology of these tools and uh, you will understand them but on this maybe at this moment these things may be sounding new right unless you are from that background okay fine then so we understand uh, the reporting layer we have different tools and uh, using these tools we want to create the reports however to create any report we need the data but the data is there in the database if you want to interact with the database you need a language and the language will communicate with the dbms database management system so we'll understand what is database management system also and then uh, the dbms will go and execute the query on the required database and it gives us the required amount of data and that will be presented either in excel or in power bi or any other tool so that's what we're going to do right so Simply, you know, if you see any Power BI role, don't think it is only meant for Power BI. The underlying things may be a little different. Maybe the role may be Power BI developer. But the other things that you definitely need to learn are the, you know, these MS Office tools like Excel especially. SQL must be there and Power BI. Okay. For the, uh, you know, visualization purpose, you may want to depend on Tableau also. Tableau also very much similar to like Power BI. Both of them are like competitors. Okay. Either you learn Power BI, a Tableau, both of them are like very much same. Uh, however, we recommend you to learn Power BI because the number of openings in the market are more for Power BI and packages also like uh, really good. Okay, now we got some idea why one should learn SQL, right? Because this works like uh, a bridge between the database and the reporting layer. Okay, so here we go. I'll give you a very simple example why we should learn SQL. Let's say you consider a restaurant example, okay? In a restaurant, we have the servers, right? Yeah, a server basically who takes the order and gets it processed and deliver the food to us, right? Similarly here, a DBMS, database management system, it's our server. It serves the DBs. Right. So let's say as a customer like Excel, okay, you go to a restaurant and you want to place an order and you need to talk to the server to place an order, right? So let's say in uh, Hyderabad, if you go to a restaurant and you talk to them in Telugu, Hindi, English, and these things, okay. Let's say if you start talking to them in Spanish, the server may not be able to understand or maybe like German, no clue, but Hindi, Telugu and English, maybe to some extent, they can understand. So understand one thing, as a client or, a, or as a customer, when you want to talk to the server, DBMS is nothing but our server here, okay, database management system. If you want to talk to the DBMS, you need to use a language which is understood by DBMS, which is understood by the server. And the language that we use to communicate with the DBMS is SQL, structured query language. So most of the RDBMS, they accept SQL as the common language, they understand. So let's say if you go to north uh, side, north part of India, then uh, most of the states they speak Hindi. So it's a, it's like a common language for them, right? So you can talk to them in Hindi. Similarly, if you want to talk to any DBMS, nothing but your server, you need to use a language if you want to talk to them, which is understood by them. So the language that we use is structured query language SQL. There are different variants of SQL, but as part of our training, we learn TSQL, Transact SQL. Transact SQL is from Microsoft. Initially, it was developed by Sybase, but later uh, Microsoft acquired it. Now it is with Microsoft, TSQL, we call it Transact SQL. 
Why I'm talking about the variants? Because uh, you would uh, hear about uh, MySQL, or you would hear about uh, Oracle SQL or ANSI SQL. Uh, then you get a question like, uh, what are these different uh, things? Like what is MySQL, what is Oracle SQL, what is TSQL and all? So no need to worry. All of them are the different variants of SQL. All of them, they look very much, very much similar. Almost 90, 95% of the coding is also same, okay? So here, as part of this training, you are going to learn TSQL, okay? But usually in the job uh, postings and all, you don't see any particularly TSQL or particularly MySQL. Why? Because even all the companies also know that if the candidate is good with any one of those SQLs, they can do everything. Because 90, 95% of the coding is very much same, okay? So you don't need to specially learn anything. I can give my you know own example. When I learned uh, SQL, I learned Oracle SQL, okay? And then when I started uh, working with uh, a company, then I started using MySQL. When I started delivering the sessions in training, started with TSQL. So it doesn't make, uh, you know, I mean, any difference. It's like very much similar, all these SQL languages, okay? A few keywords may be different, you know, in, uh, in SQL, uh, in TSQL, we may be calling a primary key column to create a primary key column. We use identity as a keyword. Oracle, we use auto increment. Okay, different words are there, but concept is same, right? So as part of this training, which variant of SQL you are going to learn? TSQL, it's a transact SQL and it is from Microsoft and which is used in the Microsoft SQL server. Okay, fine then, uh, reporting tool. Anyways, uh, most of you think all of you know what is Excel and uh, the other reporting tool, what we are going to learn is reporting and analytical tool is the Power BI for most powerful uh, data visuals, okay? So I hope you got some idea why one should have both Power BI and SQL combination. Yeah, online participants, any questions? Any questions up to this point, like why one should learn SQL and Power BI together? So Smart as you said that we, we uh, so, so I have just one query. As you said yes. that as a part of training, we'll be you know uh, using TSQL. Then our DBMS here will be Microsoft Server, is it? Correct. Yes. Uh, SQL Server. Okay. Microsoft SQL okay. Server. Okay. You see this this role also. It says Power BI developer. And here also they are asking for SQL. You see that? Microsoft SQL Server. They are, as I said, especially you know, looking for Microsoft SQL Server. Querying Microsoft SQL Server. This is what TSQL they are looking for. Right? I'm just randomly opening, okay? These guys are also looking for TSQL. Role Basically, is always... Yeah, uh, just one. Uh, basically, this TSQL completely deals with only the fetching the data. Is it extracting the data? No, TSQL has all the commands. Like it has DDL commands, DML commands, DCL, TCL, DQL, all of them. But in okay. our training program, we focus more on the DQL, data so as, query language. Yeah, as you said that the TSQL is a transact SQL. Is it the full form? Of it? Yes, transact SQL. So I thought that it is just, you know, make the transactions between the server and the respective reporting layers. That is what uh, I assume. When you call something as a transaction, okay. either you input the data, it's a transaction. You update the data, it's a transaction. You delete the data, right. it's a transaction. You retrieve the data, it's a transaction for the SQL server, right? Right, right. Yeah. So even though one more role is there, that is also looking for... Uh, yeah, I mean, just I'm randomly over in TCS. Huh? So understand that uh, when you want to get into these kind of roles, like especially Power BI roles and all, you see SQL queries again. So it is expected that this candidate would come along with SQL skill, right? Power BI, you can't perform everything using you know power bi alone you all you will also have to work with the database because as you know every data is available in the database and as a power bi developer you should know how to query the data from the database right so those fundamentals will be learning how to query our focus is more on dql data querying commands okay data querying language there are different types of commands ddls ddls data definition ddl data definition language this gdl 
data definition language is meant for the database developers. Okay. There will be, uh, you know, in the companies, there will be database developer roles. And these guys are the ones that design the databases, they develop the databases, right? They, that's where they create the databases, they create the tables, they create the views, they create the stored procedures, they create the triggers. So many things are there in the database development. But that's not our role. DDL commands, we don't do. Okay. DDL is not our role. Okay. So let me just quickly take you through that as well. DDL is not our role. Okay. I'll anyways, take you through each and every slide, but I'm just quickly explaining. DDL is not our role because uh, this is the database developer's role. Okay. Then the next part is DML, data manipulation language. This is where data will be inserted, data will be updated, data will be deleted. Okay. Insert, update, delete, truncate. Truncate is also there. So this is the job of the data entry operators, DMLs. What do they do? What do they do? They simply enter the data, they update the data, they delete the data if not needed. So this is the data entry operator's job. DDL, databases are ready, tables are ready. DML, data, the data is entered, then our job starts. DQL. Once the data is entered, then our job is to retrieve the data and create the reports. Okay? Retrieve the data and create the reports. And we also have the DCL and TCL. Again, this is the application developer's uh, role to control. Of course, this is a DB administrator role to control who should have the access to the data. TCL is the application, uh, you know, uh, uh, developer's role to control the transactions. Okay, I'll be talking about each and everything, but our focus is more on this. Thank you. Okay. Great then. Uh, so we understood uh, why we require SQL and uh, any Power BI role also requires SQL. So as part of this SQL, you'll be learning so many things. Like what is a server? What is a client? How to install? Installation also I'll include. Database, how to create, delete. Of course, this is not our job, but we still create the databases just to get some idea how the databases are created. Then we'll get into the transact SQL. There we understand the different types of commands, but as I mentioned, our focus is more on DQL. And then we'll also learn, of course, it's not our job to create a table and all, but we'll understand what is, you know, creating a table and why we need to create a table because we need to understand the constraints. As a first step, I'll be covering what is the primary key, foreign key, what are the other constraints, not null, unique. Definitely as a reporting analyst, we should have better understanding of these things. Then only we can write the better queries, right? And then data types, how to use DML. Of course, DML is not our job, but we still do that. And finally, we get into DQL. This is where we spend some good amount of time to do so many things with the select statements, right? So many things. And uh, along with aggregate function, string function, date functions. And joins, very, very important. Because if you want to work with uh, multiple tables, you definitely need to work with the joins, different types of joins, in the join, outer joins. And then set operators like union, intersect, union, all, except okay, subqueries how to work with a single row subquery, multi-row subquery, nested subqueries, nothing, nothing but writing subqueries inside subqueries. Very, very complex queries we'll create. And then we'll also understand what is a view, what is the purpose of view. You know, we also talk about what is a virtual table. Virtual table is nothing but a view only. Finally, the security and the transaction management, how to create the users, how to give them access to, you know, access any table, you know, different things, how to grant permissions, how to remove, revoke the permissions and all. Okay, so this is, Briefly about uh, SQL, okay? Our focus is more on the DQL, but along with that, we also need to learn all other topics also. It's not like only we focus on the DQL, but we'll spend more time on DQL, okay? Then we also have Power BI. Let me take you through the Power BI concepts. Sorry, Kishore, I'm uh, sorry to interrupt you. Sorry. I'm just a bit late to this session. So I just wanted to understand, is it that uh, this curriculum is designed in such a way that first we'll deal with SQL and then we'll move on to Power BI, is it? See, uh, SQL fundamentals are needed uh, before proceeding to Power BI. Uh, so when it comes to fundamentals, either we can complete the entire SQL program and then we can move on to Power BI. That is one way. Otherwise, there are a few things definitely we need to learn uh, in Power BI, but but you know a few users are here to learn directly Power BI. Looking, uh, you know, at their, I mean, they are already good with the SQL. So we're just thinking of like, um, first of all, we'll cover the SQL concepts only. For sure, we'll cover the SQL concepts, and then we'll move on to Power BI. 
but uh, all the topics in SQL, we are just thinking of, like depending on the, you know, more number of users, uh, we'll, we'll figure out. But first of all, we'll deal with Power BI, sorry, SQL only. Without SQL, we cannot proceed to Power BI. Okay, fine. Thank you. So we understand what is uh, Power, uh, Power BI, what is BI and the history of BI. A little theoretical thing is there. And uh, after that, we'll install Power BI. So if you know how to install, great, go ahead, install it. Otherwise, we'll also cover that uh, in our training itself, how to install. And once that, that is installed, then we'll try, all of us will try to create one sample report. And then our job actually starts from here, how to get the data from the different sources. The source can be anything. It may be Excel, it may be CSV, it may be SQL server also. It may be a folder, it may be a PDF, it may be a website, it can be anything, right? We just get the data, we transform that into, you know, get that into the right shape. And as part of this, we learn what is appending, what is merging. This is where I'll be talking about, uh, uh, you know, how to append the tables, multiple tables into one, how to merge the tables, you know, multiple columns into a single table, right? Um, so, so many things are there as part of the ETL activity, ETL extract transform load. We'll talk about this, what is ETL, okay? And then we'll move on to data modeling. Very, very crucial for any report. Uh, once we get the data into the report, we need to build a powerful model with the help of relationships, okay? And uh, at the time of building the relationships, I'll be talking about, once again, the primary key, foreign key, how these things can be connected and how the data can flow from one table to the other. Right. And then so many other things are there as part of the data modeling. And we'll also understand what is a date table. Very, very, very powerful uh, to do the time intelligence functions. OK, uh, Power BI has a functions called DAX, data analysis expressions, to write a very powerful time intelligence functions. We need a date table. We'll be talking about date tables as well. And then uh, we'll move on to the Power BI visualizations. OK, so so many great uh, visuals are available not only the regular, uh, regular visuals like column chart, bar chart, line chart, pie chart, donut chart, a tree map. There are so many things like, um, you know, map chart, shape map chart, animated charts. So many things, so many charts are there. Uh, today I'll show you one example of an animated chart and how quickly it can be created, I'll show you. If someone has little understanding about Power BI, they can create so many beautiful visuals, right? And not only the, you know, inbuilt visuals, you can also get custom visuals. You can download new visuals. You can create stunning dashboards, interactive reports with few clicks, right? So we'll talk about uh, those things as well. I'll, I'll create one, um, you know, one sample dashboard in this, in this today's session itself. Then we'll move on to the slicing and dicing. We understand what is a filter, slicer, how to pass the parameters, right? How to manage the interactions between the objects and drill up, you know? drill down, roll up in different kind of things. Tax, data analysis expressions, it's a formula language that we use. There are so many DAX functions available, okay? Uh, we discuss a good uh, 70, 80 DAX functions here, especially the calculate functions, date time related functions, and text related functions, statistical and mathematical functions. So many functions are there. Why I was asking this question about, you know, Excel, do you know Excel? Because uh, of this one as well, because uh, DAX, the way we write, it's very much similar to our Excel functions in DAX only. If you know how to write Excel formula, writing a DAX is very easy because both of them, they look very much similar, okay? And then finally, we move on to the publishing part. There we understand what is your Power BI service account. We'll let you know how to create your Power BI service account. As a free user, you can create the account and you can start working with Power BI. Not only just the, with the Power BI desktop, you will have a Power BI service on the web and on the mobile or a tab, how to view your dashboards and how to work with them and how to create the dashboards, how to share the dashboards, how to set up the users like admin user, member, contributor, uh, viewer. Different user levels are there, how to deal with them, and then how you can share your dashboard with your stakeholders, like, uh, uh, you know, through the sharing concept in Power BI service, okay? And also refreshing the data sets. If you have any on-premises data set, and if you want to refresh that, we have something called Power BI data gateways. How to set up the gateways and all. Of course, this is the Power BI admin job, but we'll also cover those topics. Right, so that uh, someone who attends this training, SQL and Power BI training, they will be able to do end to end, right from the databases understanding to how to publish a report and automatically refresh the reports on the Power BI service. Everything is covered as part of this training. 
and then finally managing the roles like uh, i'll create one uh, report I'll, I'll show you a quick example here i'll create one report and i want to share it with different regional managers okay let me ask you this then let me see how we can handle this in excel i have almost four regions data five regions data okay central east north south west but the requirement is this when i share it with central manager central manager should be able to see only central data not all but here in the dashboard it is showing all other regions data only so in excel what is that you do because as all of you mentioned you are good with excel this is the requirement you got and uh, your management clearly gave you a direction that okay no manager should be able to see the other region data they should be able to see their respective regions data then what is it you do What is such a do? Okay, you understood the requirement? I have the orders data. In orders, I have all regions data. If I share this dashboard, this data analysis output, if I share it via email, then all these different managers who are like Chris, Sam, Neil, different managers are there, right? They will be able to see other regions uh, data also because other regions data is also present in the dashboard. Then what is that should do? So we can, what we can do is like, um... We can segregate the data for each region and then send individual emails to all of them. Excellent. Yeah, that's what you need to do, right? Uh, you will have to delete the other uh, records data. Let's say if I'm sending it for central, I'll just select only central, uh, I mean, deselect central and delete all the data, create a new copy for the central and send the report so that uh, central data only will be there in that, right? But isn't it like a lengthy process? Let's say five regions you may manage it but how about 50 regions or 50 de no, different departments are there and you want to share this report with the department types and they shouldn't be able to see the data of others then it's not going to be that easy right but here in power bi we learn something called rls pro level security there will be creating the rules and as per the rule if i log in as a central manager only i can see the central manager data if someone else is logging in as a West manager, they can see only the West data. Dashboard is same for everyone, but the the, the viewing or the, the data that is available to see will be different for all these users. So that is called RLS, row level security. So we'll also learn how to set up those things. And you know, this course is like a very comprehensive one, covers right from what is DBMS, what is database and all that stuff, and how this data can be connected to Power BI and how you can schedule the refresh and create uh, powerful dashboards and including managing the rules, right? So many concepts are there. You will be learning all of them, okay? But only one thing is a prerequisite, Excel. And someone is asking, right, uh, you know, the formulas that you see in Power BI DAX and Excel are the same. Yeah, they are almost like 60, 65% of the formulas, they look very much same. If you know how to write them in, in Excel, you can easily write them in Power BI, okay? I'll show you a quick example today, uh, you know, how to get the data from one source and quickly create a dashboard. And there I'll be writing a few formulas, okay? Uh, to see the output. I'll open Power BI. Okay, for all these things, before I proceed, for all these things, there are material soft copies available, will be uploaded into Google Drive, you can download them. And right after the session, you will be getting a video of the session, okay? And these videos will come with, uh, after the entire program, you will get one more month extra validity for the videos. There is a reason why we have kept uh, the limited validity because uh, the moment if we provide it for six months or one year, People usually don't focus more. 
I mean, the best example is, you know, myself, uh, because I've got a couple of uh, learning packages from uh, so-and-so company and they got like lifetime validity. And it's been a uh, good three plus years I bought that course and I hardly completed any 6% of watching. Okay. So the problem is that if there is no uh, timeline for anything, when you want to complete, if there is no timeline, then it's like, it's like an ongoing thing and forever for the lifetime it goes on. So that's the reason there are, uh, uh, you know, validity restrictions and you will have to complete the course. Plus, if you have any doubts, you can refer to those videos, but within that one month or one and a half month time, what you have. Okay. So that's how it works. Then only, you know, that sense of seriousness will be created. Okay. So the all the material package will be uploaded to Google Drive. You can download for all the sample uh, files and all. You can uh, practice along with us. I would like to get one link from a website and uh, I want to directly connect to the data source and create a report. Okay. That's what I want to do now. So I'll go get the data from my web page. Okay, I'll, I'll show you all these steps. Okay, I'm just quickly creating one sample report now. Just uh, paste that, click OK. Right, this is the data. And by the way, this is directly coming from the uh, COVID-19 WHO International website. Uh, they are maintaining uh, the COVID global data. Okay, so I want to just simply say load the data into Power BI to create the reports. You see, this is reading the data from the web page. See, a good 300,000, yeah, 316,000 records are there in the table. We have loaded all the data into it. You see? Right? All the countries have reported their numbers. Okay. All right. So uh, I want to create visuals using this data. I can now easily create this. So I'll just take a, a map chart show the country and the location, show the bubble uh, size as new cases total. You see them? Look at the bubble size. And uh, legend, I want to create the region. I want to use the region there. So each region wise, how the cases are, right? Similarly, if you take a line chart, I want to show date. I'll show what is date reported and date hierarchy and uh, the total new cases. And you are interested in seeing only India cases, let's say assume they can use a, a slicer. Slicer is again a same concept like Excel. I want to just uh, filter only India. This is how it is, right? Fine, not only these things, I can also create custom charts, like uh, get more visuals. Okay, so all of you can do this, but you just need to have the Power BI service account. I'll, I'll show you how you can create your Power BI service account. Like animated bar chart race. Add it. See, these kind of things like very much easy in Power BI, but you can't do these things in Excel, getting customized uh, charts like this, okay? I want to create chart showing name as a country, value as the cumulative cases, and then uh, period is the date and uh, the date should be reported. 
See, China was in uh, top position initially when COVID uh, they've started reporting the numbers. It's, it was in just few numbers like tens, twenties, and all. That point in time, none other, you know, no other countries were reporting, right? But China started, you know, uh, reporting so many numbers every day. The numbers continuously were increasing continuously. Other countries, you know, there were like any few cases, right? Very, very, you know, few like on tens. 20s, that's it. But once China hit 80,000, look at the other countries. Okay. It's around now 50,000. See that? Every day how the cases have increased. All right. Now you will find the difference. Uh, the number of cases started coming up in other countries. You see? Even other countries have started reporting. Right. So every day numbers was numbers were growing, right? Slowly the rankings were changing. You see, Italy is now into the second position. Right. Then uh, suddenly Spain came into the picture, and we also have uh, Iran and then United States of America started picking up so many numbers, and then Spain and uh, then Italy and uh, yeah, US crossed, then Spain. You see that. Say I didn't do much, it just like simply dragged and dropped. It's the only thing is that I've created a, a, a proper data table there and just simply dragged and dropped and I am able to see the top 10 countries every day how the cases were increasing, right? So these kind of things can be easily uh, created using uh, Power BI. You don't need to, you know, what? Two minutes I was able to create this, right? You don't need to spend much time. You would have seen these kind of things in many places like LinkedIn, Facebook, people posting these things, right? Even you can uh, create something like this and you can record the video and you can share, right? So it's like very easy. And when it comes to writing the formulas, okay? I want you, just uh, let me put this uh, short it. Okay. So if I want to extract the day number from this column, day number, right? Three, four, five, six. Yeah, I got the day numbers, right? Uh, what is the formula in Excel that can extract the day number from the given date? Day number from the given date. Let's say today is uh, September 4th. For text formula. Text formula it can give you. Yeah, other than that, if I want to get the number only, the day number I want, four, I want, five, I want, six, I want. Mm, left function. No, left function can't work because it's a day. Let me take a new column here. The formula is also day. Okay, let's say you want to get the day number. The formula is day. Excel also is a day formula only, and you want to use the date report. So it will give you like uh, three, four, five, six numbers are there, right? So you can create a visual with this. Now let me create a, uh, a cal you know, a column chart. And I want to use the day number on the x-axis y-axis is the number of cases so you see this almost every day is like this but on the day number 23 highest numbers are recorded totals overall all years all months 23 day number 23 in a month so many cases right i can also come up with one more like i want to get the day name day name in excel formula is text Right, text, right? I want to get the day name. In Excel, we have a formula called text, but the same formula in the tax is format. Syntax is same. What is the date uh, value is the date reported and the day format I want to see DDD, date and DDD. Right, then I can create one more visual here, a column chart, day name, the total cases. <laughs> Strange things, Sunday got uh, highest cases, right? You see, these kind of different things you can identify. The next highest is right, the next highest. Looks like maybe people were like, uh, uh, you know, roaming outside over the weekends, like Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And after 14 days, uh, exactly two weeks after when they get it tested, right? I mean, you usually takes a good two weeks time to actually show the symptoms and all. That's when maybe on the next Saturday, Sunday, 
when they went for the testing and would have been reported or you know uh, tested positive right so you know you can draw so many insights like this on the fly on the fly you can create a column and you can figure out right so yeah that's how it is right so all these things you will be learning as part of our power bi training okay but again i'm repeating it to quickly do all these things you need to have some fair understanding about excel because in excel itself we understand those formulas writing you know uh, formulas how to write them and creating a charts by words by word charts right so many things and most of the terminology in excel and power bi is also same like in excel we call conditional formatting here we have a feature conditional formatting in excel we have remove duplicates here we have the feature remove duplicates so so many features also very much same so most of the people have this question also like why i should go for this power bi only why not tableau tableau and power bi are like com competitors okay there are few companies they prefer tableau there are few companies they prefer power bi but a lot of power bi migration projects are also coming up so as a result number of openings are there in power bi okay so and the other thing is that someone who is from strong excel background learning power bi is very easy in uh, tableau again you will have to spend more time to understand the tableau concepts and all but power bi and excel they look very much similar and they work with very much similar concepts and formulas also 60 to 65% of the formulas uh, between uh, excel and power bi are also same like uh, you have left right mid formulas in uh, uh, excel we have left right mid formulas in uh, power bi you have a date formula in excel you have a date formula in power bi you have uh, you know uh, day month year formulas in excel you have the same formulas here in power bi so power bi dax formulas are like very very easy if you have some good understanding with excel formulas okay is that fine so someone was asking like uh, power bi dax functions in excel and power bi dax yeah very much similar Okay. Any questions? And as part of this uh, training, we'll also do the practicals. We'll we'll do two projects. Uh, one is a sales uh, dashboard. We'll do as part of the training itself. We'll do a results dashboard, and we'll also do a COVID cases dashboard. Okay. I'll give you one practical exam also. Like uh, you will have to follow the. Uh, instructions and the data sets are there and you will have to read all these instructions and finally come up with a solution right using these uh, multiple uh, dimension tables and sales tables for different years and find out the top three products top five products right which uh, business is good or which product is uh, being sold more all those things you will have to identify and help the business to take a call okay so that's the final project that you will have to do Right, any questions so far? In Excel also, we can write some DAX functions. I see certain people writing, you know, a few formulas in uh, Excel. Is it the same formulas what we are using in Power BI? Very much similar. Most of the formulas they look very much similar. Let me show you a few functions here in the DAX. Let's say if if error and are not switch true value. All these things have you seen them in Excel? Yes. Okay. Concatenate format is equivalent to text. Okay, here we call it in for format, but there in Excel we call it text. Left, right, mid, upper, lower, len, search, find, replace, repeat, substitute, remove, unicare, unicare, and care, both of them are same. Okay, very much same. Right? These functions in Office 365, you find filter function, you find, you know, a, a few more functions are there. But these functions are like dedicatedly, I mean, uh, these are available only in Power BI. But uh, date time filter, uh, date time related functions like date, day, year, frac, year, month, day, hour, minute, second, today, now, week, day, week number, all these things are again Excel functions only, right? Very much similar, right? Some average, minimum, maximum divide is again a function. This is available here. Count, count, yeah, 
count rows, distinct counts. So distinct count and all, uh, you know, these functions, we, we usually see them in the database side. But yeah, these are available in the DAX, right? There are iterator functions, very, very powerful. And these iterator functions are very much similar to our sum product in Excel. If you are good with the sum product formula in Excel, you can easily use these iterator functions here. Okay. You see the list of functions, they look very much similar. Okay. There are very powerful time intelligence functions available. Dates YTD, dates QTD, MTD, data, dates in period, right? Same period last year, parallel period. So many things are there and uh, they help us to, you know, understand how the business is going on. Like, uh, are we on the right track or not? When I compare it with the last year, same period, how the sales last year, how the sales this year, whether there is any improvement or not, all these things. Yeah. Questions? We'll, we'll take you through all these functions anyways. So our objective is to create a very, very powerful report and publish it on our BI service. That's our job, okay? That's our objective. So let me log on to Power BI service. All right. So in the Power BI service, we can go to, I mean, uh, any of our last batch, maybe 466. Right. We created a dashboard there to understand what's happening in the business and how COVID affected our business using all the different uh, uh, tiles there, like uh, uh, total sales and top population, total cases, how my business is fluctuating. You know, so many things are there. Right. I can go to any of the report and find out more details about my sales and things like that. See them? I'm, I'm viewing all these things on the Google Chrome. Right? So, so many things are involved in this. There's so many charts you can create. And also you can switch. I want to show the line chart instead of the map chart. You see this line is there. And what if the total profit is increased by 50%, how my lines look? You see this? Increased. And if I keep the cursor on any of the points, it will tell me like in that on that particular day across the regions, how my profits are, how my profit percentage is, total sales is, everything in detail view it will give us, right? So these things will be creating and publishing on to the Power BI service account, okay? We'll also uh, tell you how you can create your account and then how to work with these workspaces and then create the reports and publish them as a free user only. You don't need to pay, pay anything, okay? So that's what we will do in the, in the full course, yeah? So I hope you all remember your batch number 497. Okay, if you have any questions, let me know. So tomorrow onwards, we'll be starting the sessions. Okay, as mentioned, we'll first of all go through the SQL fundamentals and then we'll move on to Power BI. And in detail SQL course, uh, you know, once we complete the Power BI and publish the reports, then you will get a better idea also about the databases. Then I'll cover the rest of the topics of uh, SQL. All right, any questions? Okay, so, all right then, so you, you don't need to worry as long as you are good with Excel, that is only the expectation for this session. 
if you are good with excel the rest of the things you know a few of the technical terms i would have used today like normalization aggregations groupings merging appending right no need to worry i'll explain you everything in today step by step okay is it the same timing every day yeah we start around 9 30 and we end by 11 o'clock yes 9 30 to 11 Okay, so for any additional information, if you want, this is the front office number. You can reach out to them. They'll help you out with the, you know, further, uh, you know, registration process on how to download the material and they will grant you the permissions to download the material and all. And you will also be added to the permanent group of uh, SQL and Power BI 497. As of now, you all are part of the temporary group. The ones who are already, uh, you have already registered for Power Pack who completed Excel, you would be directly added to uh, 497 group, uh, permanent group. And then others, please reach out to this number. You may want to reach out to this number or uh, this is also front office number only. You can reach out to this number as well. Okay. Uh, to get the tomorrow's link and the material package. My recommendation for you, download the material uh, package as soon as possible because when we start talking about the different topics, you will also be able to see the files and all so that when you practice it, it's going to be easy for you. Okay. Let me know if you have any questions. Okay, um, so once we publish the reports, then the reports will come like this. Okay, how to create your uh, business template with all the required KPIs and all, everything will be covered. How to design your base template for the business and all, right? And, uh, how, what is a drill through and how we can go to drill through and find out more about a particular country, how the numbers have increased, decreased, all those things, right? Fine then. So that's all about uh, for today's orientation session. Um, so the interested candidates can reach out to the front office. Okay, They will let you know how you can uh, download this material and all and uh, so that we can uh, continue from tomorrow okay today i understand as it's raining a uh, few of the offline participants couldn't turn up and they joined online and uh, we are running both online offline if anyone is yeah interested to join uh, offline sessions you can uh, come to our uh, excelitex amir pet office okay uh, this batch is running from amir pet location all right then so thanks everyone for joining us today and uh, i'll see you yeah. all yeah Thank you. Sir, is there Kukut Palli also now? Uh, we have a KBHP location, but as of now, uh, this batch is scheduled uh, in Amir Pet location. So Kukut Palli location, if you are interested, then probably you'll have to talk to the front office and uh, find out. Uh, yes, I will talk. Yeah, when they are planning to start. But if you are willing to join online, then uh, online is anyway. Offline only, sir. They told Kukut Palli also that we will join the demo. Okay, okay. So, yeah, you can, KPHB location is there. You just need to check with the front office. If they are planning any any batch nearby, then you can choose that. Otherwise, usually we keep some gap, like one to two weeks gap between, you know, across the locations also. Like okay. if we are starting here today, and then maybe after a couple of weeks only, uh, KPHB branch uh, starts the batch. So, okay. anyways, just in case, check with the front office team, they will have a better update. Okay, I will tag. Yeah. Thank you. Sir. Yeah, thanks everyone. I'll see you all tomorrow. Hope you have already shared your details with the friend office. Yeah, thank you. Bye.